Okay, here we are. Oh my gosh, it's like this huge new moon today, right? It was early this morning. Um, at the same time, there was a solar eclipse. And then late yesterday afternoon was the summer solstice. So we've got like all these things, all this energy going on right now. Um, and so welcome to the Cancer New Moon Astrology and Aromatherapy class. Happy summer solstice. It's officially summer. It's so great. Although it's just walking in a rainstorm. I mean, not that that's not summer, but you know. Um, so uh, happy solar eclipse, right? So there's so much going on and I'm happy that you're here and I appreciate it. And um, I'm happy if you're watching later. So I'm Sheridan Semple. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a shamanic astrologer and a spiritual aromatherapist. And um, a, we, this is how class will go in case you haven't been here before. We're going to learn about the new moon, kind of learn what's going on. We'll learn about cancer. And then we'll learn about the two essential oils that um, I like to use for cancer, the blue chamomile, which is a German chamomile and lime. Um, and then we're going to end with our new moon slash solstice slash solar eclipse intention setting ceremony. So it's a big one. So we're going to spend like a little extra time in all of that intention setting at the end today, because there is so much going on and it's such a big opportunity. Um, so make sure you have like a pen and some paper if you want to write your intentions down as well as a glass of water because cancer is a water sign so we're going to do a water ritual water ceremony and um and then if you have some blue chamomile lime that's great or other essential oils and if you don't have any that's just fine too so um let's get started so first thing let's just kind of ground and settle into this space together so you know, whatever else we've been doing, we just kind of let it go. You could use some of your essential oils, like the blue chamomile is very like calming, helps kind of get you grounded into your nervous system, settle everything down. We'll just start to create that sacred space together. So um, just start to bring your attention into your heart and just start to breathe into that. You know, as you inhale, you're breathing in energy to your heart. You may feel it coming from all the space around you. You may feel it coming from the earth up through your torso into your heart. You may feel it coming from the sky down through your crown into your heart. So as you inhale, you draw the energy in like a bellows. And then as you exhale, just let it get bigger and expand and radiate from your heart. Inhale, you pull the energy in. As you exhale, it just expands and opens through the front, through the sides, through your back. And then consciously start to breathe that energy from the earth up into your heart. And as you exhale, that heart, your heart expands, but also you reach your energy back down into the earth as well. So starting to create that exchange between the earth and yourself through your heart with your breath. Inhale the energy up from the earth. Exhale, breathe your energy down into the earth. And then after your next exhale, bring your awareness to wherever the sun is in the sky right now for you. And know that the moon is right there with the sun. 
which is exactly where the solar eclipse happened, you know, just early this morning. And as you inhale, start to connect into that energy through your heart as well. And as you exhale, reaching your energy up to the sun and the moon traveling together today. Inhale the energy of the moon and the sun into your heart. And as you exhale, you expand your energy to the sun and the moon. And then just notice, does it feel the same as the energy from the earth? Does it feel different? Does it have the same quality sensations? Is it different, similar, really different? Just noticing as the two energies commingle in your chest, your heart, your torso. And as you exhale, you expand. And here we are all in this space, in this energy together, whether we're here live right now or we're watching this later, still creating this field together. Let's just take a couple minutes in silence to lend this energy, our heart space to everything that's going on in the world right now that can use our focus, our intentions, our support, our love. And then taking one more deep, intentional breath will bring our focus back into the class. And then I will start by sharing my screen. And we're going to look at what's going on astrologically right now. Okay, so here's a chart of the new moon, which was this morning at 12.41 a.m. Mountain Time. And that was the same time as the solar eclipse, right? So the moon passes in front of, I mean, yeah, the moon passes in front of the sun. That's the solar eclipse. You couldn't see it where we are here because it's in the middle of the night. But the energy is still present for all of us. 
And the summer solstice was yesterday afternoon. So um, we're right in the middle of all this energy. And so you can see here, um, where's my little clicker? There we go, my rad animations that I figured out last time. So here's the sun and the moon together at zero degrees cancer. So the solstice, actually the summer solstice or the June solstice, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, is the moment the sun moves into cancer, right? So if you're a cancer, like you look up in the you know paper, your sign is cancer, means your sun is in cancer. So the zodiac makes up all 360 degrees around us, right? Every 30 degrees is a piece. There's these 12 signs all around us, kind of like pie charts like this. You could almost look at this picture is like the sun is in the middle and there's like, well, it's the earth and we're looking through where you see it. I'm getting too complicated, we'll forget that. So anyways, the sun moved into cancer at zero degrees cancer. That's the moment of the solstice. Then when the sun and the moon came together as the new moon, that was the solar eclipse that happened, okay? And you can also see the south node here, which we'll talk a little bit more about. It's at 29 Gemini. So it's almost, it's right about to turn into Cancer, right? So there's just a lot happening right here. And we'll talk about this more as we go along. Okay, so some of you, this is a review, but I like this picture. It shows the sun and the new moon, right? So the sun is, the new moon is between the sun and the earth. Sometimes it's lower or higher. There's not always an eclipse when it happens. There's some other things that have to come into play, which is what the nodes are. So we'll look at that, but you can see it's how, you know, the full moon is when the moon is on the other side and we can see all the light on the moon, right? So it's just kind of cool to, have that orientation. Um, here's why we had an eclipse. So I got this picture from bluelightlady.com and it's a little blurry, but I think it shows very well. So the nodes are where the, the sun seems to move, right? We're actually moving around the sun, but in this picture you can see, right? The line of where we go around the sun and where the moon goes around us. And where those two intersect is the north node and the south node, right? So in the last picture here, the north node, this horseshoe shape, is right near the moon and the sun. And that's what allows for an eclipse to happen. Because if the moon is up here at the top, it's not going to be in the path of the sun, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so... And we don't need to worry about the north and the south node necessarily so much. That we could explain another time. But I just wanted you to kind of see why that's what's happened. So here's the type of eclipse that we just had hours ago. It's called an annular eclipse. So that means the moon is farther away from us. So it's smaller. So it's not enough to completely block out the sun. And it leaves this ring of fire around it. So it's called a ring of fire. So some people attribute all kinds of meaning to that specifically, but it's kind of cool. It's a more intense kind of, I mean, eclipses are always intense, but that's the kind of eclipse we just had. And I got this picture from NASA. And then let's talk about cancer. Okay. And we'll come back to some stuff around the solstice and the eclipse um, when we get into our intention setting part. So Cancer is a water sign, right? It kicks off the summer solstice, which we just talked about, or the winter solstice if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. It's of the feeling function. So the last time we learned about Gemini, the new moon is in Gemini, which was an air sign, which is about the mental function, right? Consciousness. Water is all about feeling, the feeling function. Not necessarily always emotions, because like fire can have emotions or, or you know, Earth can have emotions, but that feeling, that place of knowing and feeling just inside, like empathy, that type of, that type of feeling. Cancer is also what we consider an in-service to the culture or the community sign. So Gemini was an in-service to spirit sign. Cancer is in-service to the culture community, meaning its focus, everything it does is serving the community in some way. It's considered a right brain 
sign because it's water and it's a feminine sign. Doesn't mean female, it just means feminine yin in energy. It kicks off the summer solstice, which I said, and it's considered an involution sign. So in shamanic astrology, we say the water and earth signs are involution, meaning they're bringing spirit down into matter for a reason, where fire and air are evolution signs, where their trajectory is up and out more towards spirit. So cancer specifically is like the archetypal mother sign. And um, that's for male or female, right? It doesn't have to be, um, but it's, um, you know, men can have a lot of cancer in their charts too. They can be on a cancer path of what they're learning. And it's about that archetype of the mother type of energy that they're learning about. Um, it's the nurturer, right? Uh, the mother that gives us the unconditional love. Um, creates a safe space for us to be vulnerable. It nourishes a seed, some type of seed to fruition or maturity. That's what um, the mothering, nurturing sign does. It's um, about responsible parenting, right? And I put parenting in quotation marks because cancer doesn't mean it has to have its own biological children or have children in any way. It's about responsibly caring for something and helping it grow to its maturity, whatever that looks like. Cancer is investigating feelings, empathy, compassion, um, being a healthy giver, right? It's a giver sign. So depending upon where cancer sits in your chart and it may not at all it may just be the energy that we're all in for you because of the new moon and the solstice and the eclipse right now but if cancer is on your chart if it's like your moon these this list would be things that you already know somewhere inside that you're good at but if it's like your rising sign or maybe like your Venus or your Mars or your Mercury are in Cancer, that's new things that you're learning about. So that's where it's like you'd be investigating having empathy and compassion. You wouldn't already be the expert at it. Um, it's all about personal relationships. So some of the signs are more impersonal and relationship is not something that's really on their radar or is their primary focus. But for cancer, it completely is, right? It's the mother's archetype. So it's got to have some seed that it's like nourishing, nurturing, helping it to grow. Um, cancer serves the family and the community for the generations to come. So healthy cancer is focused on making choices and doing things that keep us going for the generations to come. It's not in a healthy expression, it's not just making something that serves its seed right here, right now. It's serving this seed with the intention of this seed serving the greater whole for all of us. That's how cancer is an in service to the community type of sign. And cancer now is like, it's helping us develop new themes for family and home, right? We've been in a place where we're all about the nuclear family for a long time at least here, like in the Western world of, you know, the nuclear family, that's been kind of like breaking apart and not working as much. So, so part of what cancer is here to do is to kind of investigate and develop these new themes for us. Each sign is doing that in some way, you know, these archetypes change and grow and evolve over time. And that's what cancer's evolutionary process is about is like, creating new family, new themes for home, that type of thing. Cancer asks the question, what is the nature of family, roots, and home? How can I nurture and support? That's what cancer is all about. And its spiritual path is to investigate and then uphold the traditions and institutions that provide security and long-lasting stability and nourishment to the children, family, and community. And those last two quotes come from Daniel Giamaro, who is the founder of Shamanic Astrology. 
Okay. Let's learn about some of the essences for cancer. Okay, so blue chamomile, right? And I want to show you guys this because if you're not familiar with cam uh, blue chamomile or any of the blue essences, which um, I just want to make sure, which I don't have it. I can't see myself on the screen right now. So I just want to make sure you can see how it's going to run, but you can see it makes this like amazing dark blue color when it comes out but it's doing that from these white flowers. So this is literally the blue chamomile um, flower. It's this white flower, but when it's steam distilled, it makes this beautiful kind of like dark green, blue essential oil. And that's because of the constituents that are, or you could call it like the chemicals that are in the flower. It has this azulene, which comes out blue. So I just thought that's kind of <clears throat> cool to look at and see. So blue chamomile is um, in the daisy family, which is easy to see in this picture. Its Latin name is Matricaria chamomila, and Matricaria means womb, right? So it's like mother, cancer, womb, blue chamomile, those all go completely together. It's native to Europe and Western Asia. It grows anywhere from like six inches to two feet tall. So it's not a huge plant. Azulene we talked about is that constituent that makes it blue and all of the blue essences, uh, azulene is really amazing as like an anti-inflammatory pain relief. So blue tansy, yarrow, um, these blue essential oils, blue chamomile, they all do that. It's steam distilled from the flowering tops. And the one that I have comes from Nepal. We get it from Nepal and from Egypt. Um, okay, so blue chamomile, this spiritual and emotional uses are, it instills wisdom, um, instills the wisdom of peace, right? It brings peace into the body. Chamomile is huge for doing that. It smooths the flow of the body's chi or energy, right? So if the energy is like jacked up or it's, it's um, chaotic, blue chamomile smooths that flow. It's really good for the third and fifth chakras. So the um, solar plexus and the throat chakra, all the blue oils are really good for the fifth chakra. So the third chakra is kind of about power, control, the fifth chakra, voice, communication. Um, blue chamomile is really good for all those types of energies. Um, it's excellent for self-nurturing and self-love, right? So it helps us kind of be cancer to ourselves, right? So if you're a woman and you have your Mars in cancer, that's what that means. You want to apply that cancer energy to yourself. Or if you're a man and you have your Venus in cancer, it's the same thing. You want to apply that cancer energy to yourself. So you're self-nurturing, self-loving. Blue chamomile helps facilitate that. It helps with patience and living in divine timing, right? Not trying to rush things, force things, but like let things unfold as they should. Blue chamomile helps you get there receptivity to intuition. So if that's something you're trying to cultivate, blue chamomile is an amazing essence to use for that because it helps promote communication with your higher self or your angels or your spirit or God or whatever, um, whatever terms you like to use for how you connect with that unseen spiritual world. It's amazing for meditation. It helps us loosen the grip of like old habits and ideas and beliefs that are no longer useful in living the life that you want to live, which is really what eclipses are all about as well. So this is a great um, essence to support the eclipse and the eclipse in cancer specifically. And then it um, helps us deal with like anger, grief, abandonment type of issues. So kind of some mothering type of issues as well, potentially. The physical uses of blue chamomile, it relaxes the nervous system. It's gentle for children. So it's like one of my go-to essences for using with kids for all kinds of things. 
helps with insomnia, sleep, right? Calming us down, stress, dealing with stress, spasms and pain. That's where that blue part comes in. Anti-inflammatory, pain relieving. That's what the blue does a lot. Uh, inflammation, the digestive system. So chamomile, right? We drink chamomile tea for our tummies. That's what chamomile does. Whether it's blue or Roman or wild, all the chamomiles help with uh, digestive system. So indigestion, nausea, constipation, irritable bowel, all of that. Uh, blue chamomile is amazing for asthma, the inflammation, the irritation, but it's not a, it, it's a strong smell, but it's, it's gentle. It, it doesn't um, make the bronchi relax. So I like chamomile for asthma a lot. And then the uterus and uh, menstruation uh, support because remember, um, uh, matricaria means womb. Okay, so then we have a lime, beautiful, yummy lime. And so um, lime is uh, part of the citrus family. This is actually the hybrid lime is. Um, it's a flowering evergreen. So remember hybrid doesn't mean like GMO, right? Sometimes that can get confused. It just means a couple of different citrus th trees in the wild got together and they made lime, okay? So um, it grows anywhere from like six feet to 13 feet tall. So not a huge tree, but a tree much bigger than blue chamomile. Its origin is uncertain. So they don't really know where the lime came from exactly, but Wild limes are believed to have first grown in Indonesia or Southeast Asia, and then were transported to the Mediterranean and North Africa around um, 1000 CE, the common era. And the lime I have comes from Mexico. <clears throat> so it doesn't really grow well in the United States. It has to, you know, you get like key limes down in the very bottom of Florida, but lime really does not like the cold at all, even in Florida cold. Okay, so the spiritual and emotional uses for Lyme are, it helps with emotional mothering for feelings of deep loss. It soothes grief and heartache, all mother issues, especially around the separation between the ideal of what we wanted our mother to be and the reality of what our mother was or is, okay? Um, it soothes cellular memory. So like a salve for traumatic memories, that kind of stuff that gets stored in the cells. Lime helps release and uh, soothe that. It's really good for doing inner child work, allows our feelings to be explored and then released constructively. It, sh it supports shamanic cord cutting. So sometimes we'll have a practice of like, trying to cut the cords that are keeping us attached to people that we're like in dysfunctional connections with. Lime helps that. So you could use lime in that process. It brings harmony to us. Uh, it helps with depression. It's uplifting. All the citruses do this, right? When you smell that, right? I've got it here. We had smell a vision I could share it, but it's like, it just lights you up. A friend of mine calls it um, the Caribbean in a bottle, right? It just makes you feel happy, more joyful. It promotes joy through cleansing and healing, and it helps us find a clarity of purpose. The physical uses, it's one of the fastest pH lifters. So if you're very acidic, lime is great because it helps alkalize you quickly. It's highly antibacterial. It's good for cold, sore throats. It's antiviral. It helps with candida, like yeast infections. It's antiparasitic. So it's one of those essences that like is all around antimicrobial and it's really cheap. It's one of the cheapest essences. So it's something that I use a lot for these types of things because you don't need to lay out a bunch of money for it. It's a nervine. So it calms the nervous system as well, just like the blue chamomile, but it also strengthens the nerves. It helps with mental clarity, helps with addictions. A lot of, um, a lot of citruses do that. Reduces cellulite, it's cleansing and detoxifying, and it also helps with jet lag. One thing too I wanna say about lime is all the citruses are photosensitive. So you always wanna be mindful of where you're putting them, right? Like, 
You don't want to put it all over your tummy and then like go out in the sun because you could get burned there more readily. So all the citruses do that. So if you're using the essences today as we go through the ceremony, make sure if you're using lime or lemon or another citrus, you're putting it somewhere that's not going to be in the sun, you know, tomorrow or the next day, shall we say. All right. So, okay. We just had the summer solstice. So the solstice, we're kind of moving into the ceremonial pieces. So start kind of thinking about your intentions and you could start writing some of this down as I go through this, but the summer solstice is the halfway mark through the year. Okay. So the new year from an astrological perspective and different astrologers will have a different perspective on this, but mine is the new year starts at the winter solstice right? When the sun starts to come back. And at that time, generally, that's when we make kind of like our New Year's intentions, our New Year's resolutions, or the actual New Year, January 1st, is very short, um, comes very quickly after that winter solstice. So it's a check-in from the new year, the winter solstice, the New Year's intentions we set, that type of thing. Um, it's like the full moon in the moon cycle. So the new moon is like the winter solstice, the time when the cycle starts, we set the intentions, we plant the seeds, and then it moves to the other half of the cycle, the full moon or the summer solstice. And it's the time where we get to kind of check in with our intention and release and let go of what's getting in the way of bringing our intention to fruition. So the solstice is here for that. So if you had, you know, set New Year's resolutions or intentions at the winter solstice, now is a good time to like revisit that list and kind of see like, where are you at with it? How's that going for you? Are you kind of nailing everything? Are you kind of off? Have you totally spaced something? And kind of see where you're at. And is there anything that you need to let go of to help refocus you back to those intentions or even if those intentions are really what you want anymore or there's some that you need to let go of because it's not really where you want to be going anymore that type of thing so that's part of the energy that we'll be bringing into our ceremonial piece okay then we have the eclipse that just happened right so eclipses are this time of like where rapid change can happen, right? So we say the sun, the moon, or the earth, depending upon the type of eclipse, but this was a solar eclipse. So the moon comes in front and blocks out the light of the sun. So that's this time that you can really kind of look into the shadow a little bit like what we talked about in the last side, where it's like, what is standing in the way of you fully stepping into who you are and what you came here to do, right? You may not have all the answers to that question, but you might have like a piece, a part, a something, right? So what is that? That shadow piece that you could look into for yourself, you could look into it for cancer because that's the sign that it's in. What is that stuff that we're like denying and kind of keeping under the surface, right? Then we get to the eclipse, the, you know, the full occultation, occultation piece. And that's like, you know, this place of where information can come into us. And then we move where it starts to move back away from the sun. And that's the place of like the new moon where you're setting the intentions, right? So it's like this rapid change of like the dark, into the light quickly. It supports you in stepping more firmly into your intended path of why you're here. So it's an amazing time to set intentions of, you know, what seeds do you want to be planting, especially for this like next six months, because that's the time that we're in. And the eclipse season is only happens twice a year. So sometimes there's only two eclipses. Sometimes there's three like there are right now. So the last full moon till the next full moon are all eclipses of all of these full moon eclipse, new moon eclipse, full moon eclipse, because it's where the node is near the sun and the moon, which we saw in one of those earlier slides. So it's an, it's an awesome time, this whole month window 
to set intentions of what you want to be bringing to fruition like cancer nurturing within yourself or the community or the culture at large in the times to come so um okay and then we have the new moon ritual and we know from the previous times you've met but if you're new today the new moon is the time that we plant the seeds we set an intention for the whole moon cycle okay so um you know today we have a lot more going on than just the new moon so i'd love you to dive into that first part around the solstice you know where are you at halfway through the year of your intentions for the year if you didn't make any at the new year no big deal what would be your intentions now for the rest of the year as well as your intentions the seeds you want to plant in that rich fertile soil of this eclipse season that's happening and then we take it from the macro we're coming down to the micro to what is one piece of those intentions that you can set one seed you want to plant out of all those seeds as well for the new moon for the moon cycle of this one month right so if I have this big goal of like, let's say losing weight is my intention for the rest of the year, my new moon seed could be, you know, I'm going to not eat after eight o'clock at night, trying to like curb those extra calories or something, right? That's a funny example, but essentially you get what I'm saying. Okay. So it's all about working consciously with the cosmic energies and the timings that are happening to facilitate what we want to create in our own lives. Okay, so I'm going to stop the share for now. And then let's start into this ceremonial piece. So let's take, you know, we'll take a little bit longer today and start writing out, you know, where are you at with you know, the solstice piece, that six month mark, whether you made intentions before or not, what were your intentions or how would you like to recommit to those earlier intentions for the six months to come? As well as, you know, what seeds with this eclipse energy you really want to be cultivating through this six months as well, right? So those marry really well together. And then let's take one piece as well and just clearly line that out of what you want this moon cycle to focus on as well okay so does that all make sense if not you can unmute yourself and ask questions but otherwise let's take you know a good we'll take a few minutes for this maybe you've been starting to kind of think about this as we've been walking through it but um let's take you know a few minutes and just write down our intentions for all those things I've just talked about. <laughs>
Maybe we'll take one more minute. Okay, and then let's grab our glass of water. <clears throat> I learned this ceremony from Cynthia, who wrote the, um, the Book of Anointing, and it's beautiful. And I am going to take my, um, my lime and put it into my water. A couple drops and my chamomile. but you could also anoint yourself. That's a very ancient ceremonial way to prepare for ceremony or burn a smudge stick, you know, whatever helps you connect into the spirit of things. And then I'll mute myself. Let's whisper or speak or sing our intentions into the glass of water, right? So imagine as we start, before we go there, Imagine just like that energy of the earth was coming up into your body. Imagine that coming up and infusing the water in your glass. And also imagine that energy of the solstice, cancer, the eclipse, the new moon, the sun, coming down into infusing your glass with that energy as well. Then start to say and speak your intentions into your glass of water and then drink it and let it fill your soul, your cells, your soul, fill your soul too, but fill your cells with that water, all that energy, the intention, the seed that you're planting for this moon cycle and this six months of the year. So feel all that intention, that energy through the water, through the energy that we're in, just 
just nourishing all your cells, your soul, your being. And then keeping your focus on that one intention for this moon cycle. This one thing you'll focus on for this month that helps support those bigger intentions for the rest of this year and that bigger intention of the entire um, eclipse season supporting. And then I'm going to share my screen once more. <clears throat> and we'll look at what is going on astrologically right now. Which is a lot of what's been going on astrologically, right? So 2020 is all about this theme of Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto, which you can see here. Saturn's the H1, Jupiter's the four, and then Pluto is the purple one. Traveling all together throughout this year. So these outer planets, they move much more slowly. So when they come together or they come into some kind of an aspect, like together and opposition, squares, that'll be the theme for out, throughout a good period of time. So this is the theme for 2020, and we'll just keep talking about this each time. So, um, and you can see in this picture, they're all retrograde right now, as evidenced by that little R with the X at the bottom of it. So meaning they're giving us an opportunity to kind of dive deeper into the energy that they are trying to um, uh, share or bring our attention to. So Saturn is a middle world planet that's all about like what really works here in this world and doesn't work, the structures, right? Pluto is all about, um, it's meant to bring us to a place of more empowerment, but it usually does that through a feeling of powerlessness or a lot of fear. It's meant to bring us like into our feelings. It wants to compost things. So it's like we have this, you know, which I realize I'm preaching to the choir because you guys are all living in and experiencing this, but we can see it as an, our intent mirrored in the solar system for us to understand better. It's like our old structures and systems that are not working, like let's say racism, wants to be like comp composted and changed through like an intense uh, emotions and feelings and um, a sense of powerlessness, right? That all the rage, right? These are all like Pluto things where we really feel our feeling. But the intention is to make change for something new, a better structure to come out of it where we are more empowered and unified, right? Then Jupiter being there is just basically, it's like pours steroids on these two things coming together. And this is not a lineup that happens very often. So this is like the theme of what's happening all throughout the rest of this year and later this month, Pluto and Jupiter come back into exact conjunction the way the sun and the moon are today, where they're right together, which lights this up even more, right? So just to kind of see that. And then we have Mercury retrograde is happening now too. So it's just giving us a chance to move into that right brain side of our brains, that Cancerian type of place that helps us to nurture and nourish, right? These changes and the things that are trying to come through. So I feel like this cancer energy is going to be very like helpful to all the intensity of things, but we have to make sure that we're like taking care of ourselves, unconditionally loving, not an easy task, um, but giving ourselves nourishment, nour nourishing others, nurturing others, that type of thing. So I feel like it's, it's hopeful what's happening, the energy is present, but it, you know, it hasn't been easy and um, things are just not easy right now, as we well know. So um, that is the end of the class. The next 
the class is um, is another new moon in Cancer, which is really interesting. But it happens two hours before the moon moves into Leo. So the class next time I'm going to kind of do a hybrid of like the Cancer new moon energies, but also moving into the Leo energy. So we'll learn about like what is happening for us at that moment. And we'll also learn about um, two essential oils, one for Cancer, one for Leo. So we're going to learn about Neroli, which is orange blossom for Cancer, and Jasmine for Leo. And that'll be, um, uh, oh, I didn't write it down. I wrote all the times of when it's changing. Oh, I did write it down. Monday, July 20th at four o'clock Mountain Time will be our next like Cancer slash Leo new moon ceremony. Um, you can always uh, get shamanic astrology readings from me or get the wisdom of the earth essential oils on my website, SheridanSemple.com, as well as always find out when our next new moon class is. Um, I'm teaching the wisdom of the earth medicinal aromatherapy certification coming up in July online, where you're going to get over 40 essential oil samples to use uh, yourself at the class. And then also, when I send out the email, the recording, I'm going to ask for any feedback. So if there's things you'd like me to do in the class or things you'd like me to stop doing in the class or spend more time on, spend less time on, I'd love to get your feedback because I definitely want to make the class be what is serving your needs. So um, please, I'd love to get the feedback. So if you feel so inclined to share anything, I'd love to hear that back, but I'll send that email out. And then... I'll turn the recording off and then um, we will, uh, nice, Courtney, can you pass the oils through Zoom? I know, I wish, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, I'm going to end the recording and then any of you want to stick around and ha we'll do a Q&A that'll be like off the recording. Okay, thanks for being here.